It is a universally accepted dogma of the Catholic Church that man, in union with the grace of the Holy Spirit, must merit heaven by his good works. These works are meritorious only when they are performed in the state of grace and with a good intention. We have shown that according to Holy Scripture, the Christian can actually merit heaven for himself by his good works. Sola fide, the reasons for the Reformation, next on So What? Hi, I'm Don Wade. And I'm Chris Dorman. And welcome back to So What? Sola fide, Chris. You know, it was really providential that this week we lost a great, great theologian, yeah. uh, a great man, a great defender of the faith, R.C. Sproul. Dr. Sproul um, exposited the Word of God uh, in an amazing way. He defended the faith in an amazing way, Chris. But this idea of sola fide was really a hallmark of what his whole ministry was about. Yeah, I agree. He lived and breathed this, and he was willing to die for it. He spent decades, and he's he has been the backbone of folks like ourselves, Chris, for decades. Yeah. He changed my life. Yeah, me too. God me too. used him to change our lives, yeah, me didn't too. he? Yeah, totally. And so when you look at Sola Fide, why is it important? Why was the Reformation important, right? We were thinking about this um, this morning, Chris, as we got ready for this, that really what it comes down to is how is a man made right with God? That's right. Which is really the, the goal of, of, of any serious religious practice is, is how, does, how, does, how does someone get right with God? How do you do that? Right. And that's what sola fide is all about. Justification by faith. And so, you know, so when you think about Martin Luther, right? Mm. In our first podcast, we, we alluded to this. We talked about it, right? We talked about this man. Yeah, there you go. This man who absolutely was insane over his sin. A monk who's in a monastery away from the world. Doesn't have women around him. Doesn't no Wi-Fi. Yeah, no Wi-Fi, no TV, no internet, no radio. All these, what could this guy possibly be right? struggling with? Right, And yet he's sleeping on on uh, freezing floors in the winter time, naked. He's flagellating himself. He's depriving himself of food and water, trying to... to pay penance, right? Yeah. This idea of penance, Chris. Yeah. I think it's important for us to look at this and why Why would a man struggle like that? What does it have to do with being saved by faith? When Martin Luther got a hold of a, a, a Greek translation of the New Testament written by, put together by Erasmus, he was shocked to see how Jerome, the author of the Vulgate, the translator yeah. of the Vulgate, the Catholic Bible, the word that he had used for the Greek word metanoia. The Latin word he chose is the word that is defined as do penance. Hmm. So in the early Catholic Bibles, it doesn't say repent and be baptized for the remission of your sins. It says do penance and be baptized. And other classic passages was all, which we'll put down here for you, the, 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 the way it was originally translated, it says do penance. And, and if you're familiar with Catholic dogma at all, there's this significant amount of teaching that has evolved around this what we would argue is a is is a misinterpretation of the word metanoia has nothing whatsoever to do with doing penance metanoia means is a change of heart a change of mind turn away from sin turn to god that's metanoia that's repentance right it's not about doing good deeds to find my put myself in favor with god it's turning away from sin and turning to God. That's, that's metanoia. Right, and that's the gospel, right? That's and, the gospel! And that's why Paul is so passionate in the book of Galatians, mm. right? He is so passionate to talk about this idea of, hey man, you started by the grace of God, but now you're going to be, be perfected by what you do? No, that's a false gospel. Now, when we, we hear people banter this back and forth, Chris, this idea of a false yeah, gospel. Yeah, we, we gotta right? take a second, because people talk, they say that a lot, Don. Right. And they say, oh my gosh, that's a false gospel, and they just sort of destroy any argument right there, like, okay, you're not saved then. Boom. But we have to be careful here what we're saying, and we you, you need to understand it. What's what, the context? Of... What is the context? What's Paul saying is, is, is a false gospel? He's saying adherence to the circumcision, right? Circum adding anything Anything to the completed work of Jesus Christ is anathema, okay? It puts you outside of grace. It means you are not 
forgiven. Right. And he's saying circumcision. Who instituted circumcision? God did. God did, yes. <laughs> it was God's command, okay? And this idea of the law, where'd the law come from? God. 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 It's God's law. Is, is the law sin? Uh, no. No, the law is not sin. The law is good. It, it is good. The law is good. It's something that God instituted. It's a reflection of his character, of his heart. And yet, Paul says, if you add the law to the gospel of Jesus Christ, you are damned. Right. You are unforgiven. You are unforgiven. In our opening quote, we, we read that we can merit salvation by our works. That, beloved, that's anathema. That's a false gospel. That idea of penance, of working, working yourself into heaven, working yourself into God's favor is what made Martin Luther crazy. And in fact, the, the, the Council of Trent, they definitively stated, right, Chris? Yes, they that did. if a man believed that there was not some residual effect of your sin that needed to be dealt with after you... That after, you have to work out. That you still have you to work out. You personally have to work out to get right with God. If you believe that, that, that that's not the case, then let, let you be anathema. You're so they dead. were anathematizing people right. who did not believe that we had to put something onto this, that we had something ourselves to do. This idea of justification by faith hmm. is really the heart of the Reformation. Yeah. And it is what separates the saved from the unsaved. Rome says that we are unforgiven because we believe, we believe in sola fide. We believe that is what the scriptures teach, sola fide. Because we believe that, Rome says we are anathema, we are damned. Paul says to Rome, you are adding to the grace of God. You are anathema. So, beloved, when, when you're a teacher, we get caught up in words all the time and, and what they mean. But you know what? This word matters. It does matter. It matters. Words make a difference. Yeah. R.C. Sproul said, the scariest verse in the Bible is in Matthew 7, when Jesus said, many will come to me on that day and say, Lord, Lord, didn't we do great and mighty things in your name? And what will he say to them? Away from me, I never knew you. That's right. I never knew you. If you believe a false gospel, if you believe, if you believe that your works are necessary for your salvation, that you can merit heaven, then beloved, Jesus' warning is for you. Yeah. Don't let anyone add to the gospel because it's a damned lie. Thank you for tuning in, my friends, and I'll talk to you next week. See you soon.